Nvidia's 40 series GPUs were actually off to a pretty good start. With the 4090 and 4080, despite being very expensive, they gave us a glimpse of the insane capabilities of this new architecture. Performance per watt was leaps and bounds beyond anything, and outright performance as well was just ridiculous. But since then, things went downhill pretty fast, with the 4070 and 4070 Ti offering less of a generational increase, being more expensive, and somehow offering less bang for the buck than a 4080 and a 4090 somehow. Today, we're going to see if that changes. Nvidia has a bit of a chance to redeem themselves today with the 4060 Ti. Now, we're actually off to a pretty good start here because this thing is launching at $399, which if you remember is the same as the 3060 Ti. And also, you know, accounting for inflation over the last few years, which has been pretty insane, 399 now is worth quite a bit less. You are kind of getting a cheaper GPU this time around. This also makes it the first Nvidia GPU this gen not to have a price increase over the 30 series. Now come July, this will also be coming in a 16 gigabyte VRAM option. This one here by default is eight gigabytes and Nvidia are offering the 16 gigabyte model for a pretty steep $100 extra. And I'm gonna take a bet and say that that one is probably not the play, but at the end of the day, whether you want it or not, it's good to have some options. And there is some more good news too. The 4060 Ti is only a 160 watt card, which means better thermals for your system, you know, lower power draw. And it also means that you do have smaller form factor cards to work with. I mean, some of the ones that I've seen online are just ridiculously tiny. However, there is a dark truth to why this is. The 4060 Ti is the first 40 series GPU to have less CUDA cores than its predecessor. Like, Really? Sure, it's not one-to-one. -one. They're different generations, but it's a pretty good indicator of how much horsepower has been intended for this GPU. Also, despite having eight gigabytes of VRAM or the 16 gigabyte option if you prefer, the memory bus width is significantly cut down versus the 3060 Ti. So memory performance as a whole here is much lower that's not looking good at all. But let's see if AMD can do any better. And I think we'd agree AMD's 7000 series GPUs have been off to a pretty rocky start. I mean, they have nothing to compete with Nvidia's 4090. Their architecture as a whole has been proven to be less power efficient. And also they just refuse to release anything at an attainable price point. That is until now. This is the new RX 7600 and it's launching for just 270 bucks. That makes it $130 cheaper than Nvidia's 4060 Ti. And that's enough of a difference that it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison, especially since Nvidia's 4060 isn't too far away. But with both of these GPUs launching just one day apart, I mean, they are close enough in price that we should be definitely putting them head to head. As for the specs, well, unlike Nvidia, AMD have at least piled on more cores for this generation. We get 32 compute units with a boost clock of up to 2600 megahertz, eight gigabytes of VRAM, just like the 4060 Ti, and the total board power is rated almost identically at just 165. Watts. But now let's talk about performance and let's actually start with the 4060 Ti. And today I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just dive right into the good stuff. First off, here's a 12 game comparison at 1440p compared to the previous gen 3060 Ti. And naturally, you know, between GPU generations, you'd expect gains here of around 30% at least. In fact, between the 3090 and 4090, we consistently saw increases of over 75%. As for the new 4060 Ti though, we're basically seeing the same thing. In Hogwarts Legacy, for example, the 3060 Ti gets 65 FPS, while the new 4060 Ti gets 69. In Dying Light 2, there's an even smaller difference, and really, most games across the board here are barely separated by a few FPS. Modern Warfare 2 is a slight outlier, that game just really doesn't seem to like the 30 series for some reason, but otherwise, the gaming experience here, in terms of raw rendering output without ray tracing or DLSS, it's basically the same. And when we run the averages, we're looking at just a 10% increase in performance at 1440p between these two generations. So yeah, not looking good at all, but let's compare it to the 4070, right? This thing just came out, it's $200 more expensive, which equates to a 50% increase in price, which is a pretty hefty increase. And to be honest, it's hard to say which one is the better GPU based on value. I found the 4070 to be 33% faster on average, and you do get an extra four gigabytes of VRAM as well, but the 4060 Ti being that much cheaper does make it the superior value pick. Not saying that you should run out and buy either of these GPUs, but you know, when we run the math, yeah, you are getting more frames per dollar on the 4060 Ti. Again, that's ignoring the difference in VRAM though, which should also be considered. I did actually encounter a few games at 1440p where 
the 4060 Ti does spit out a kind of VRAM error. However, you know, this is at 1440p in games with really heavy texture packs. You can just dial the textures back a little bit, but you know, you just wouldn't have this problem on a 4070. Now, something that Nvidia have leaned on very heavily with the 4060 Ti is their frame generation feature. If you don't know what this is, it's like an AI feature which can artificially insert frames between truly rendered frames. And since you have a higher frame count, the frame rate and perceived smoothness is better. The problem is it's not in every game. And secondly, it's not even appropriate for every game. Esports titles, for example, are by default somewhere where you just wouldn't want to turn on frame gen because the frame rate is typically high enough. And two, the input lag would kind of just, you know, weigh out the benefits of turning it on. But coming back to that original point, you know, it's kind of dishonest to say that the 4060 Ti is this much faster than a 3060 Ti because, yeah, we have frame gen. Because some people who don't know what frame gen is see that chart and just think it's X amount faster without really understanding what frame gen is and what it does. So, yeah, frame gen, you know, I've talked about it in the review of the 4080 and the 4090. I actually like it as a feature. It's a nice to have. But it would be nice if Nvidia stopped pretending like it's the standard. I mean, it might be in the future, but it definitely is not today. And it definitely is not an excuse for releasing a poor performing GPU and saying, oh, well, we have this one software feature that makes up for it. But let's take a look at the performance of the AMD 7600. You know, here we're saving 130 bucks versus the 4060 Ti, which is very substantial. But unfortunately, it shows. I mean, guys, what's going on? Like, we've seen the 4080, we've seen the 7900 XTX, we know what you can do. Why all of a sudden, when it comes to offering something more mainstream, do you just both nerf the compute performance into oblivion? Like, did AMD really just release an almost $300 GPU in 2023 that can't hit a stable 60 FPS at 1440p high settings? For what it's worth, when we run the numbers head to head, both of them offer roughly the same lack of bang for the buck. So I guess we can say they're equally as bad. There's one last thing that I want to get off my chest, and it's when I saw the press releases for both the 7600 and the 4060 Ti. And AMD and Nvidia, uh, you know, started with how gamers are still gaming at 1080p. Like it's some sort of choice or justification for only releasing a 1080p focused card. Like, of course, most gamers are just gaming at 1080p. That's all they can afford. If they had the horsepower, they wouldn't choose to game at 1080p. And if you guys actually released capable products at the $300 price point, many 1080p gamers would upgrade to 1440 in an instant. Now, if you've watched my previous GPU reviews, uh, you'll know that I'm pretty optimistic when it comes to hardware. I don't dunk on these GPUs too much when they come out and they're just kind of average. If it's at least a little bit better than what we saw last time, last generation, and it's technically the best thing that you can buy at the moment, then you know, you're not forced to buy it. Let's not get upset about it. The 4070 is actually a perfect example. I mean, when this came out, a lot of other reviewers just flamed the crap out of this thing. And, you know, kind of rightfully so. It's not much of an increase over the 3070 and it's actually a price increase, but it's still the fastest GPU that you can buy at $600. It's incredibly power efficient and it's one of the fastest two slot GPUs that you can buy. But when it comes to the 4060 Ti and the AMD 7600, I really have nothing positive to say at all. I mean, it really feels like both AMD and Nvidia got together and purposely made bad GPUs so that you guys could look to the more expensive stuff where ironically, you are actually getting somehow more bang for the buck. With such slim increases here over last generation, I mean, we're basically just looking at the same performance this time as last gen at roughly the same price, just in a more power efficient package. And yeah, that improved power efficiency, that is cool. I'm a big fan of that, but I think we'd all just rather more performance at this particular price. Now for esports gamers just looking to get something up and running, I mean, yeah, you know, I played Overwatch on the 7600 and the 4060 Ti. You can get a 240 Hz plus experience at 1440p, but even there, I would look to the used market instead. Take a look at what 3060 Ti's are going for. Like it's 215 bucks, 220 bucks. If you're patient, at least, you know, you're looking at minimum 270 bucks, which is a much better performing deal. Even 3070s, which would be faster than a 4060 Ti, you can see plenty of those that have sold for like 250 bucks on eBay. And that's something that I would much rather you guys actually purchase. And this is a comparison that just should not be so easy for me to make, but it is because AMD and Nvidia have just seemingly stopped trying. That's pretty much it. Uh, as always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.